and we are live. Hello my good friends and welcome to this new episode of Learning from the Masters uh, where I am um, I'm glad to talk about uh, Claude Monet which is a, a great artist um, one of the, the main figure of the Impressionism movement one of the founder of this movement and definitely a a great artist that has um, had a tremendous impact on on the entire history of art. So um, yeah, it's gonna be uh, colorful and full of light and full of uh, flowers. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a cool cool episode, especially if you like impressionism. All right, let me check if the chat is working properly. Alright, apparently it works. Hello Mariana, love your streams, love you being here. Um, yeah, so Monet, well, um, first of all, 1840, 1926, and he was very prolific. Um, like, he was, uh, he painted a lot. I mean, 1926 is pretty late in the, like, in the tremendous revolution that, that occurred, like, right exactly at this time. He was right in the center of a, an artistic revolution with all the new avant-garde movements that uh, arose around this time. And he was, like, still painting when, like, uh, there was like futurism, um, Dada, the um, kind of the, the premises of surrealism, all these things like cubism, all these things were happening and Monet was still active um, at, at this time. And, 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 and a lot of the, the, the new movements, a lot of the avant-garde that that came up between like the, the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century uh, were hugely uh, caused by the tremendous dynamism that was brought by uh, the Impressionism uh, as, a, as a movement, as a completely new way to understand the world. So you had Impressionism and, and immediately after like post-Impressionism expressionism um i mean all these new schools of arts like the uh it was really the the, the time of the isms <laughs> it's kind of a it's kind of a, a trope like in the world of art like this is really what what's considered the time of isms and uh and it's a, a period where artists were really trying to each um, group of, of artists were really trying to to uh, found a, a movement in such. Um, but Claude Monet himself was um, not that much interested in founding a movement as such. He did not came up with uh, the world imp impressionism uh, himself. Like Claude Monet did not invent. Um, the word impressionism um, it's it's actually um, it's actually critics that uh, came up with with this um, with this word and uh, I don't know if you if you know that but in the beginning it was a derogatory term and in the beginning the word impressionism was um, was kind of meant as a to, to mock the the movement by the impressionists. Sorry. Um, all right. Sorry for that. Okay. So first he came up with this painting. Let me, let me remove my head. All right. So first he came up with this painting, um, which is signed right here like the famous signature Claude Monet in uh, 1872 
and uh, the, the title of this uh, famous, famous painting is called uh, Impression Soleil Levant, which means Impression Rising Sun. And, um, and because of that, a critic that was here at, in the salon at the time, uh, like kind of um, to, to mock uh, this, this new style that he didn't understand and that he couldn't know that he would have such a great impact, um, kind of called Monet and his followers impressionists uh, based on this on this painting but in the beginning it was um, it was designed to to mock to mock them like kind of uh, because like the right now the idea that you can uh, paint an impression is is well it's understood right now but in at the time it was not at all so um, it's, it's how it came from hello so we have Kelly Ramirez hello um, uh, Raymond, Raymond, we have Mike, hello Mike, and Blackmaster, salut Blackmaster. All right, so impression, rising sun, so, and you can already see the, uh, the approach chosen by Monet, which is to, so you have, like, some main components, like, most of the time, visible brush brushwork, which is not uh, like very loose brushwork, which is sometimes a, a, a characteristic of impressionism. You have outdoor light and natural light, and the idea to use color as a way to create the um, the visual impression of uh, lights and shadows. So you don't um, you don't take some type of brown and and create various grades uh, following this brown. You actually use colors and the optical effects of colors to represent uh, how how the 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 lights and shadows can have a, an optical chromatic effect on your eyes when you see it on site. So kind of replicate the effect of light and not just follow the form. You're not just, see you, you have this idea of where when, when you're a beginner you're supposed to paint a sphere and you understand that by gradating grays and you create the visual impression of the form, well, it's not the same thing, and that's not the idea of Impressionism. The idea of Impressionism is to, to replicate some chromatic effects that light has in natural environments, mostly. Um, most Impressionist um, paintings are outdoors, and, and in the outside world, when you paint plein air, you have some some chromatic optical effects, like the fact that um, the shadows recedes to go more and more blue. Um, this is a, a, a side effect of the the sky being blue. So you have even like shadows in the natural world. The, the further you go, the 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 um, the more the shadows get blue because um, because they still. Well, I cannot explain right here because it's like more foggy environment and the blue comes from like the, the, <coughs> the difference to balance the orange, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to it uh, later and see what we can find about this uh, bluish effect about the name. So, all right. So a very famous painter, one of the, I think, highest highest selling um, artist uh, in my in my estimation if you have a Monet in your uh, in your garage or in the attic you are a millionaire so I, I can only wish for you that you own a genuine Monet because that would be kind of uh, kind of cool. All right, let's 
try to start with... Hmm. Let's try to follow a, a timeline. All right, this is an early work. See what I was talking about with the the effect of 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 color. How to control color? How you really have a huge emphasis on on keeping the colors alive, even with uh, a landscape that's supposed to be quite monochromatic. You still have a a great variety is not just white and uh, and and gray it's mostly like warm warm yellow light yellow and here you have something a lot more bluish so you have the shadows that are blue which is what I was uh, saying earlier and replicate all these effects of color it w it was the, the 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 main idea for the impressions so really cool really cool painting i really like this one how like these shadows are very dramatic um impressionists were really always very interested in playing with these shapes by the shadows they really liked how the you know when the trees when you have lights coming from uh, through trees trees sorry you have like patches of of, of color on the ground um, and this is uh, something that he was playing with at the time very textured as well and um, and a much more emphasis on replicating the the appearance rather than the thing itself so generally it was painted without um, or with very little uh, preparatory drawing well even I think in the case of money no drawing at all if I remember right let me share Mais là c'est... Ok. Je sais pas comment ça se fait. Alright. Alright, so what else about money? What would be interesting? That's very really cool. <laughs> really love these brush strokes. I am not a fan of the like, of the kind of towel here, but I really like this. I really like this fish. Hey, Mervin Ali. Thank you very much. Bonjour à toi et thank you. Merci beaucoup. Um, yeah, really cool. I really like the effects of like, you see the brush strokes, blue. I mean, it's really, really fun. This type of thing to do is really fun. I, I really like the energy of this fish. I don't know how far you can zoom in. Hmm. Wonder what's the background and what's... Uh... De loin il est parfait, mais même de près, je dors aussi de près, tu, vois, tu peux encore zoomer et je trouve que c'est... 
C'est encore très efficace de près. J'aime beaucoup, mais... I don't have much to say, just... Just looking at the brushwork is kind of... Uh, kind of, you know... Hypnotizing. Well, if you like brushwork... Um, surely... No artist is better than Monet. I like how effective everything is. Just starting my silver point drawing. I have to admit, I'm really pleased with it. That's awesome, Mike. It's a work of patience and careful, careful, careful work, <laughs> careful planning, and just taking the time. But it's uh, it's very pleasant, as you said. Really, really nice. Um, I haven't spent a lot. Uh, it's the first time I spend as much time looking at this painting. I knew it, but I really like all these tiny brush strokes. Super cool. Like it. I like it a lot. So this is more early work. It had some interior thing. Hmm. It's funny how he was already kind of like there's not much hesitation. Like this was an earlier painting. Which is not typical of his style. So normally in early career like this you you would see more hesitation and more mm, how to say and this is also doesn't look typical. So you have a couple of paintings that are not really typical but already right here and with this painting you already have something very um that really looks like monet actually that you can know well this one you could say it's someone else so this is still very early work so it's kind of normal but with uh with more time already like some of the major like major hits like this one uh, 1873 so it's still very recent early in his career and you have one of the hit pieces of impressionism with uh, this one which is called poppy field uh, very famous for how just how to recreate and use color as a as a way to bring a focus and energy. Um, I mean, this is really a classic, a classic.
So characters are mostly suggested. Really suggested. Just a couple of brush strokes. Nothing very refined. You really have to be in the mindset of, well, I'm not looking from, from, from a very close distance, I'm looking from far away. If you want to understand the mindset. And as well, you have to understand that um, Impressionism was only made possible because of the introduction of, um, of paint tubes, which was a new thing at the time. Like paint tubes uh, was a big thing at the time because it would allow the artist for the first time to just take the paint with them and, um, and just, just go paint outside which um, before was a lot, was really a struggle um, when you have to grind your own paint yourself uh, it's much more complicated to to take it with you uh, and go paint plein air so with this uh, with this new material or this new way of using paint came a, a whole an entirely new approach to new approach to painting so you have to imagine Monet just uh, with uh, a small plein air easel a little chair maybe a little umbrella uh, to protect from the sun and uh, and just just painting right in the in the field wherever and the idea was just to try to capture the moment, capture the the, the, the mood of the moment, not not work um, in the studio, not just work um, as things appear at a certain time, at a given time, at a given place, and, um, and this is already capturing this moment with the these the characters just just walking by and you know that in a moment there they will probably will left the frame and but it's this this gives this idea of really capturing capturing a, a moment like having a snapshot of um, of, of, a, of an instant and uh, and this is hugely caused also by the the introduction and the invention of photography which has completely changed the way artists uh, viewed the world so you have you have photography and like most people were most artists in the 19th century had to deal with the invention of photography how do you deal with the fact that someone is mechanically uh, doing a much better work than you do for accuracy and and capturing instantaneous moments um, so how do you deal with that uh, luckily enough for the impressionist at the time photography was only black and white so the idea the main idea of painters was to say well we still have color so we are going to put a much greater emphasis on color and luckily enough for the painters at the time is that, well, photography was, you had to stand pretty still for it to capture your image properly. You have to, you had to take a long pose, like a, a 10 seconds pose or a, a, like, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds pose. I don't know how, mo how long they had to, to, to really stay still. So this was another advantage of the painters of, of the time, which was to say, well, if you have something that requires moving and all, we can capture that better because we have we have the ability to just just paint it and and capture movement 
without faces becoming blurry and all. Or even though that's kind of the, the, the case. Even though, like, some old photographs, you can see the kids in the family pictures or babies most of the time would turn their heads and it would make the faces all blurry. Uh, in the very very old photographs where you have just where you had to stay still for a long time um, and um, so this was kind of the answer from the painters to the the challenges of photography um, painters were saying well all right we are not capable of doing the same thing but we are going to show you uh, what we're capable of and um, and it's still a relevant a relevant objection today you know, like painters and which is still why um, this kind of impressionist style and approach like with a very bold brushwork a lot of texture uh, visible brush strokes is still preferred today uh, because it still looks like like a painting and uh, the, the 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 painting as as an object is still an important factor comme ça ça paraît simple mais c'est un grand travail de perspective du paysage ouais et en plus euh, sans vraiment utiliser les les principes de perspective classique puisque là ici on est dans quelque chose de très libre fait par touches de couleur juxtaposées les unes avec les autres il n'y a pas euh, les, les, les fameuses tu sais, lignes de perspective il a, on, on sent qu'il a vraiment travaillé euh, directement au pinceau Hello Polar Bear Hello Burak Hello Aisha Aisha Sorry if I mispronounce your name and the mic is saying the poppy field is one of the most enduring painting I have ever seen. Sorry to say, but I didn't really like my Paris trip that much. Oh, I'm sorry to know that. How come? All right, so, um, well, we're gonna see this one first. Springtime. Well, this was mostly an interest. Of the impressionist this still is a, a huge attraction for painters even today well and you can basically forget about the entire superior part upper part of the of this painting you can make clearly see that the entire focus is on these like patches of light falling through the, the leaves and uh, and this was the main like <laughs> the, the main focus the this was the only interest you can clearly see that well all right the, the portrait yeah whatever the hands and book and, and whatever who cares what I'm really interested in says Monet is painting this well it's it's very very clear I don't know if you need any proof uh, but well not saying that the the upper part is not well painted but the upper part is kind of bland and if you only had this for instance you would say well okay hmm? all right yeah the color is not pretty good but when you have all the the, the play with lights and shadows you can start feeling what the impressionists um, approach was and what they what in what was interesting to the impressionist see um, and and you can see what what um, how they liked playing with light light and color and how color can translate into light and how light can translate into color so right here you have a, a white object so the right here it's in the shadow of the leaves and right here it's like directly direct directly um, uh, receiving light sunlight so it appears very white 
yeah, strongly white, kind of pinkish white. And, uh, and this pinkish white is Maybe it's the color of the dress, but also I think it's like counterbalancing because it's a kind of slight pink, blue, and red, like kind of. Hmm. I don't know if it's more in, in the magenta range or in the kind of traditional red. Um, but it's it's meant to to balance the green, and right here you can see that the green this this part of the of the grass is much more yellow than this part of the grass, and this can this can happen like if it's more dry or if it's different type of grass, uh, this will appear uh, much differently. And all of that put next to each other creates this um, this very intense view of of how the light hits the surface of the, of the ground. So you have the the idea right here. It's not the most beautiful painting by Monet in my opinion, but you have uh, the. Uh, the idea behind Impressionism, at least. Uh, we were all moody, mostly the teachers and a lot of Parisians were, were really rather rude. Well, not surprising. They didn't leave doors open or say sorry if they bump into you. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh. I like London more because I'm used to the people who sure they're rude, but not that rude. This member of staff at the Louvre tried to ignore our teachers when they were asking about if we could go in the pantheon. Ah, uh, yeah, well, you know, like big cities. Um, Paris is very dense city. Uh, it's not like London, which is very, very large and spread out. Like Paris is a lot of people, a um, lot of people at the same, <laughs> in the same small city. Um, yeah, so a lot of. Uh... Um, oh, so which one now? Hmm. Hmm, which one now? Hmm, this one looks cool. I see you wanted London. The Thames below Westminster. I don't know the backstory of this one. So you have atmospheric perspective. Very simple right here, you can uh, you can see all the all the various layers of the perspective foreground is is um, is very very dark like in between it's a, a little bit uh, l less dark but not the the lightest and the the further you go in the background the lighter and the less well well delineated outlined it is so it creates this impression that the more the further you go the blurrier it gets I thought French people were very kind and polite yeah but not Parisians in the metro at 8 in the morning <laughs> um, But like it, it's like people getting to work in a kind of <laughs> kind of hostile environment, like you know, 
like have millions of people going to work at the, at the same time, you feel stressed and all, and you, you have like a, a group of tourists in your way and, uh, and you just don't have time. So that's how it is. Unfortunately, but it's not not all France is like this, and not all Parisians are like this as well. You are un unlucky. So with Monet, you also have lots of um, lots of painting like this that he painted along the Seine. He was very prolific because it was really one-time paintings all the time. He was going out and came back with uh, with a painting almost every time so um, yeah you have a lot of paintings by by Monet you have some very cool effects right here with the the reflections so each Each little mark is a, is a color that's used somewhere else in the portrait. This color right here is the color of the house. And this is patches of the color from the sky. That's right here. Because water is all like, water is um, wavy. Um, it, it, it reflects following various angles. And right here, the water is much more, is much quieter, so it reflects straight like a mirror, more like a mirror. And right here, you see all the effects of the waves. So, pretty cool. You can see that it's not, it's not that much, um, that thick it's it's quite thick but not so much you can still see the texture of the canvas quite well so it's more like like almost like stippling This one's remind. This one reminds me of Van Gogh's style. Yeah, it can. It's more like Van Gogh's style is um, taking a lot from from Monet. Monet came earlier. There are no such nations that can be polite at the time of mornings. Monet also did some studio work and claimed them to be plein air, so you never know. Yeah, he did some studio work, um, but mostly from other plein air work. But he did a lot of plein air as well, so. And I think that the earlier, the earlier, um, the earlier paintings were mostly uh, mostly plein air, especially, especially these ones around the Seine, because um, th there's uh, evidence of other painters like I think Renoir or someone else that used to go with Monet. Um, and paint with him so they have like similar views from different painters and this one is very cool as well really cool how the colors really look like the type of atmosphere like you know the sun is not always shining bright and when it's just partly cloudy like this 
This is exactly the type of um, the type of atmosphere that you'd get. Uh, I really like how these gray actually really capture this type of of not sunny. It's not dark. It's just right in between. And um, I really think that this work on shadows. Um, Everything works really well in terms of color. At least the colors are are very very accurate even today. Like you can, if you just squint your eyes and forget about about the brushwork, you could say, well, this is a, a pixelated photo of of a bridge. So. We like the effect of, of to recreate the, the kind of mood and atmosphere. So the Mona Lisa looks better on the laptop. Well, I guess yeah, because it's kind of small and it's full of people all around. So so what else do we have there's so many paintings to see so let's jump jump a little bit This is also um, kind of a new theme: is painting, uh, painting objects of the the modern world, not idealizing. Um, so this one plays on on blue. It's not very impressionistic, because I, I doubt that. The, the view right there was as blue as it is right here. This one is more expressionistic or is more maybe a color study uh, playing with the chromatic effects of blue. Um, there's a better one. This one is not the, the greatest uh, train station by Monet. This one works better in terms of color, like feels more realistic, but it feels less expressive, less less cool, I think. More shadowy, more dark. And it was not uncommon for Monet to paint several versions of the same spot at various various moments uh, of the day or various moments of like uh, the year. Uh, let me try to find if we have another train station because it was not my favorite. Mm. We are gonna have a look at these after that. Alright, you know. Um, So right here you have all the various versions. He painted a cathedral in the world. And you have, it's very famous because you have various views of the same uh, cathedral at various moments and various kind of atmospheres. So this is gray weather. So pretty, pretty common, right? You have a, an early morning effect, which uh, has some really, really cool textures right here. You can see how he was already starting to really have fun. And he was getting more free at the time. He was really, really already very... Um, very bold in the brushwork because like to build 
something as thick as this and still have the overall shape of the of the monument I really like the gradation right here from this very very pale orange going all the way and getting lighter and more bluish as it goes up and how the, the, the outline is almost impossible to notice. A really cool painting this one so you have another one with uh, a little bit stronger sunlight but still the the facade is in the in the still in the shadows and all the blue is just the the reflection of the sky and again, the brushwork is uh, is very amazing. You could say, yeah, it's a, a Jackson Pollock. So Pollock didn't didn't invent anything at all. Like Monet used to do the same thing, except that he was actually representing something that, if you are standing from from the distance, lo actually looks like something. And if you get really really close it's almost abstract it's almost like just just like um you know like a used rag that you have in a in a studio like have patches of, of look at this green like pure green pure yellow all this optical mix that creates a vibrant surface. Really cool. Look at how this blue is constructed. You have some, some like um, muddish brown, like greenish, weird brown. That's supposed to create kind of the volutes of the of the rosas. And. And this very intense blue, but some some green right here. I mean, it's um, you even have some pink right there. I mean, it's amazing how all these tiny patches of color kind of make sense in the end. And kind of work. <laughs> Funny, right? And uh, last one morning fog come on sharpen up can have anything sharper oh no you're disappointing me google arts and culture i wanted something sharp hi carrie Hey, Professor and Pancake. These looks these look like pastels more than oils from a distance. Still fascinating. Yeah. Um. So Jim is is quoting. Um. Quote. I'm utterly dejected and dissatisfied with what I have done. I have aimed I have aimed too high and only succeeded in spoiling what was good. Uh, end quote. And this was Monet as he was painting this cathedral. Well, if only he knew um, that uh, this was kind of uh, one of his iconic 
iconic work. Uh, definitely. Um, still, you have the same haystacks at different moments with various light effects. <laughs> and this is really cool to understand how you can play with uh, with shadows and and create chromatic variety chromatic variety within the shadows right here the haystack is supposed to be more like you know yellow orange something something around the range of, of yellow ochre right and you think well for the shadows of, of a haystack I'm gonna need a like a dark yellow, some some type of brown, right? Well, not necessarily, because you have to consider that whatever is right here in the shadow is still receiving light. Well, light from where? From the sky. Uh, it's still receiving light from the sky. So the most direct light comes from the sun, to direct sun rays. But the, the, the blue sky is still emitting light. So whenever you're outside, it's not pure, whatever is in the shadows is not pure absence of light. You have lots of reflected lights, lights coming from the ground, coming from, from all over, from the clouds. Everything kind of gives this part in the shadows a little bit of light. And this little bit of light creates a as well as as darkening it's not just darker it's also creating a hue shift and most of the time in nature this hue shift goes towards uh, blue so whatever is in in the shadows in nature if if the, the the sun is shining most of the time the shadows are are blue so it's an effect that's understood for that has been understood uh, for a long time, actually, even in the Renaissance, they knew that. But most of the time, it was made for perspe uh, atmospheric perspective for things far in the landscape. And Monet shows that well, you can actually um, do the same with um, like objects much closer. See how. These shadows are blue grayish, even like purple here. I mean, you wouldn't guess that um, you wouldn't guess what it's supposed to represent if I just showed you this uh, a sample of this color right here. So it's uh, it works only in the context. Well, it works. It's not realistic as well. It's not. It's not a realistic, imp but it's an impression. So, impressionism goes beyond just representing light as it's as it's perceived. It's um, it's mostly representing the some some cool chromatic effects using lights as it is perceived. So it's it's more than than picking up the the actual colors of the world. It's not being hyper realistic, of course. So it's a it's a fine line between realism, visual realism, and uh, and um, and complete exp expressionism. And you have impressionism right in the middle. Hello Miss White. C'est juste que la lumière est plus intensifiée et que l'ombre ne doit pas tout le temps rester en noir. En effet, ouais, faut pas, en effet, c'est l'ombre est jamais noire en fait. L'ombre est simplement de la couleur de l'objet quand il reçoit pas de lumière. Mais et de la couleur des, de ce qui se réfléchit qui retransmet une partie de la lumière réfléchie sur l'objet en retour. 
So this is another effect of, of snow. This is a lot less convincing, in my opinion, than the, the sunny one. Sun in the mist. Yeah. I'm not convinced convinced by this ones. Not as much. This one is much better. This is the kind of weird light that you can get. Well, maybe uh, this greenish light could be a little bit excessive. But uh, this type of pinkish hue where all the countryside is kind of in this type of, of of weird light it happens sometimes just have to for me just have to forget about this green which is too intense if if this green was a little bit less intense um, for me it could work better or just maybe more bluish just a tint more bluish this is the only thing that kind of makes it feel unrealistic but it's very uh, very strong though so if you if you aim for realism um, you don't want this type but the the visual uh, the chromatic the chromatic punch is undeniable it's like bam take this take this um, fluorescent green almost <laughs> super strong Okay, so this was the haystacks. Now you have to find the the needle. Poplars on the Apte. Hmm. You can see how money became more, more and more effective in his brushwork. How he spent less time um, brushing and still applied more paint every time with each brush brush stroke. I mean, it's much thicker than what we've seen previously, and we are going um, uh, chronology chron in a, in a chrono uh, like we are <laughs> advancing in time. I can't say chronology. So, if you compare it to the previous landscapes that we've seen from earlier, like the 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 surface is is thicker. It's it's more assertive, <clears throat> and everything just feels very abstract from. When you zoom in like this, everything feels very, very abstract. This is the reflection of the clouds. But the, yeah, this, the thickness really shows how he was really in control of, of the, the quantity. How, I mean, he had his style already, so he didn't have to think too much about, about the shapes and the colors and he could just very freely just work on that gesture and and let it just let just let it go like this uh, very very freely he also had cataracts and the color change in his work when his cataracts went ripe. 
All right. If you say so. I didn't know that. So this is all the the Giverny paintings. When he was older, he um, I think I don't know bought a house in a in the countryside called Giverny, and he had a lot of uh, water lilies and uh, and this very beautiful garden. You can you can visit the garden uh, today, even if you go there. Um, still a great. Uh, a great place to go, um, especially if you're interested in Monet and if you're interested in in nature and all. There is Zen, and you can see some painting as well. And this was a uh, really when he became almost um, almost an abstract painter. Like this, this is still pretty figurative. But um, for some of the biggest um, paintings, the ones that you can see in the Orangerie in Paris, you really have something that's quite close to abstraction, in fact. Um, in, under some, some angles. Um, but especially if, you, if you're looking from very, very close, if you zoom very, very, very close, I mean, it's almost impossible to to get exactly what's happening. So it's all patches of color sitting next to each other and making sense and creating this view that, um, that could be a, a, a photographic representation of, a, of this landscape, really. Um, and that's really genius because it's just just blobs of, of color. It's hard exactly to know because you have to have the right the right color for the shadows, you have to right you have the right color for the lights. Everything has to be so accurate, but it looks so natural. So yeah, really cool, and uh, yeah, definitely. Let's, um, so you have numerous, numerous views of the same garden, of the, the water lily, you have lots of views. Still the same idea, paint things at different moments in time. Sometimes it's just toying with colors because really using this this strong purple right there so bold because this purple is kind of a complementary of of all the green that's used for the water and the leaves and everything is just so so bold This um, this pond water color is just top notch. It really looks like you know this old pond water. It's kind of murky, kind of greenish.
re recall. So what else do we have? So there's so many paintings to see with money. There was a lot of fakes at some point. Now it's uh, a lot better, a lot harder to have your work um, authenticated. I'm just saying, if you have the money at home. It's always so fun to zoom at the, at the brushwork. created that water garden himself spent three decades painting it basically painted it the entire the, for the rest of his life after after he moved there uh, Tom no Monet mostly painted a la prima really if you have one example of a la prima it's money I'm not saying like maybe the the biggest the biggest paintings were done in several sessions but really the idea was one day one painting kind of a one one atmosphere one one sitting and one painting because uh, the idea was to capture each individual moment Yeah, his water lilies are fantastic, and the, when you have all of them, when you're there, it uh, really sets kind of a mood when you're surrounded by water lilies. It's really something. Um, let me try to find some. So you have blue water lilies and. After some times, it really became more a a kind of research on how how far you could push color and how far you can you can push the paint around. Really, the, after some times, it was not really about representing anything. I mean, look at this, and don't forget that we are. Like, look at this, 1914, 1914, so, so much has happened between the beginning of Monet's career and the end of his career. I mean, cubism has happened, um, I mean, lots of things have happened, and he's really pushing, and he never stopped, like, kind of his research in in painting his style has really changed right here you can see that he was kind of experimenting with some type of of effect and the idea was not anymore to to it was not the same anymore like the, you can see how the brushworks has gotten like all curvy everything is very like tormented it's not called like like it used to be you have some colors that are very um, like this red right here, very dark red. Feels very strange. Everything is very, very tormented. It's purple. It's even some some 
black apparently like pure black I don't know if he created with a mixture or if it's uh, some genuine black everything feels much more tormented it's not necessarily the the greatest painting but you can see how um, all this series was actually he he's kind of researched how far could he push it Wow, this one is impressive. Look at this. The water lily pond in the evening. Yeah, sure. It, I'm sure it looked like this. <laughs> See, he was like kind of in another world already. Like if he, he, at the end of his career, he was almost already in the world of abstraction. And, and I have to say that the abstract the abstract work that was made was not as good as this i mean if you consider that it's almost on the bridge of, on the bridge of of of, um, of abstraction this is much better than i don't know kandinsky or or malevich or who else I mean, this is abstraction done right, if you consider that abstract. It's not, because technically it's supposed to be a water lily pond, but, well... And, uh, and this was, this was a huge, let me, let me check the size. Uh, it's 2 meters by 6 meters. Six true, so it's huge, huge, huge painting. So when you're in front of that, I mean that's impressive, very impressive. Look at the black in this work, yeah. The previous one, but this one, uh, I mean, I'm, I like how intense everything is. And there's no, there's no mit mismatch in the cutters. I mean, they play with each other, but no one is kind of strange to the others. It's, it's still compressed in terms of 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 color, of like it's all centered around this orange, orange red, and then comes this blue, and then this kind of purple and here you have something more towards blue green but it's amazing how everything kind of kind of transitions into into the colors surrounding I don't know if it makes sense but I mean I really like really like this this uh, view and I being in front of it because it's two meters by six meters, so being in front of it must be amazing. It's interesting that take, told, uh, taking different paths, they arrived at the same turbulent cutter use. Yeah, it was, it was getting more and more crucial to to yeah make colors more expressive um, like the beginning of Manet's career um, he was the only one painting with uh, this type of style but you have to remember that in between came Van Gogh came Cezanne came all these painters that kind of uh, still pushed the use of color even later, even the expressionists and all these painters have 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 continued the work of Monet and pushed it even further but Monet still had some 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 tricks in his sleeves because when he painted this this type of, of painting 
he showed that he could still be modern uh, because at the time he was not modern anymore it was kind of an old an old grandpa painting in in his in his backyard but still when you have a painting like this one look I mean, isn't that uh, super modern? Uh, let me just check real quick the, the dimensions. Uh, so, seven, 17 meters by 2 meters. That's huge. <laughs> I I advise you go yourself because I I can't zoom in properly on this on this painting. So it opened after the artist's death. But you definitely have some some roots, some 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 early abstraction right there in, in Monet in Monet's late career. I like this yellow. Right here you have nothing almost. Just just color. It's very interesting to see, especially to see the evolution. And it's a shame that he was um, put aside so early. But it was a, really a time of, of revolution. So, yeah, in a way, in a way, this one is great as well. Uh, when you enter the room, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, in a way... Um, money was was kind of put aside because he was an old guy and you had all the new the new avant-garde with all the cubism and and oh yeah futurism and you had all these new ideas coming from from the east with uh, communism and all these new like brand new revolutionary ideas coming from all over the place and Monet was just an old grandpa painting, painting in the countryside at the time, and people kind of forgot about about him. Like he was um, recognized as a great artist uh, for his early work, but he soon became kind of a old-fashioned because you had Picasso at the same time. You had all these new guys. And he kind of was forgotten. Uh, well, not forgotten, but yeah, you know, he was not that important, and people didn't understand the the impact at the time that he had. But um, it soon got got fixed because uh, he's now recognized for uh, for the impact that he had also on. on more avant-garde paintings. Think about the... I don't know if this one is also 17 meters, but think about the quantity of paint that it requires. Uh, I hope to be as forgotten as Monet is now he was not forgotten, he was... <laughs> his influence was forgotten, that's a better way to phrase it, probably. Um, because the everything was happening with, you know, the very active guys, young guys, painting in, in Paris, where the 
effervescence was, like everything was happening there, and Monet was kind of quietly painting in a garden with uh, with his uh, daughter or granddaughter. I don't remember exactly. So yeah, it, he was not as as proactive as the other guys were and at the time especially the key was to find a new movement well we want a new movement we want an avant-garde we want something new and Monet was still kind of prolonging the same type of research he was still painting impressionism so it was kind of oh okay that's, that's nice but we, we want to see what the new guys are saying. They have a new thing called cubism. They have a new thing called this and that. Uh, feels very, uh, very cool. So, and so it's not that he was forgotten. Because um, he was not. But we kind of, we have forgotten his influence in the 20th century. Because we, we, we know about his influence in the 19th. But all the work that he did in the 20th century. Remember, he painted for a quarter of the 20th century. Because we, we think, when you, th when you think Monet, you think 19th century. 19th century, of course, 19th. But he painted for, he painted for a quarter of the the 20th century which is huge all right uh, however now that this innovation and influence has been rediscovered it will probably not be forgotten again and his place in the pantheon is secure yeah of course of course um, and yeah he's he hasn't really been rediscovered because um, um, his work is always sold quite well um, there's been some kind of fashion at some times uh, but um, not not fashion just um, uh, what's the word I forgot the word he was fashionable at, at, at some time and not as well, not as much as some other times. Well, that's how I want to say it. All right. But yeah, great, uh, great painter, and I really like. <laughs> and this one. <laughs> so intense. Still the Japanese bridge. <laughs> Trend. Yeah, that's the word I was I was looking for. Thank you, Tom. Trend. All right. Well, this was nice um, looking at some Monet's work with uh, with all of you. It was uh, a fun fun journey and an interesting interesting to walk with Monet through an entirely new new way of seeing and using color so I hope you you like this episode I'm gonna finish on on this note and I, I'll leave you on this wonderful painting with uh, with a very pleasing very pleasing use of purple and green and and pink so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode i see you on the next one and uh, have a good one bye